Welcome back everyone. Well today I'm just out getting things a bit ready for uh, winter time at the cabin just at home. Getting organized and uh, if I just have a little sit down and enjoy a fire. I don't know about you guys but it doesn't matter where I am. I just love being by a fire. The smells and the sounds. It's just super relaxing. So uh, getting ready to bring stuff to the cabin for uh, getting ready for the winter winter season. And uh, I, I just want to go over a few things that I have and I kind of want to talk about how things just aren't made the way they used to be. And I want to hear your thoughts on this topic too. Stay tuned. So last time I left you guys at the cabin, I was batting down the hatches for winter. Uh, had been an issue with the propane heater, as many of you remember. So I have a little uh, Martin uh, propane heater that I used to heat the cabin over the winter. And I couldn't get it started. The igniter wasn't working. So I knew with supply chain shortages that I needed to take action sooner rather than later. So I had contacted uh, Bismar. So I contacted Bismar sort of late in the summer to kind of get things organized. Thought I had plenty of time uh, to get, uh, you know, the igniter and the electro that causes a spark to go into the unit. And as you guys know, uh, on the last video at the cabin, uh, they didn't send me the right part. So this is what they sent me here, just like the button. And uh, this part here, which does not have the electrode, as you guys can see. I was extremely frustrated. Uh, that's where I kind of left you guys at the last uh, video there because pretty disappointed. You know, I got this unit like, I don't know, it was about three, four years ago maybe and uh, it just sort of stopped working. The electrode had cracked and I showed you guys that um, in the previous video and I thought, what the heck? Like, you know, come on, this is a pretty young unit. So thankfully all the parts were under warranty and I thought uh, it was reasonable to contact them and, and get the parts. And so I made a list of what I needed and I got the wrong thing. Basically, well, I need, you know, I need this, but I also need the electrode as well. So anyways, cue me uh, contacting them again, and then, oh, I don't know, it was about like three weeks ago, I ended up with this package. So after sending them an email with photos of what I wanted, I got all this again. I got another uh, igniter here, I got some more tubing, um, what's that, oh, it's just some more ga gas tubing, another fitting, oh, there's some of the jets, and the knob to start it. So uh, I was so disappointed, because, you know. It's, it's getting on in the season here. We need to heat the cabin. So anyway, I sent another another email. I don't know how many emails I've sent them. Um, and then no reply to it. So I was super disappointed. But then uh, last week, look what I got. Yahoo! It finally arrived. <laughs> that is what I needed. That's all that I needed. And I got all that other stuff sent to me. Although I did ask for a few other replacement parts like two emails ago, um, which I'd already received. So anyway, I guess I have a whole bunch of parts now for the heater, which is fabulous. And none of this I, I paid for. So that's even better so yeah you guys saw my last video had cracked right here you know so i don't know some of these parts just aren't uh aren't what they used to be so i have been to the cabin since um before you know before i got this stuff in the mail and i had to get the heater going so uh took your guys advice and what we did was um i ended up using actually high uh, temperature silicone and i stuck those two little we stuck those two little pieces together so once it was glued i was able to uh spark it no problem and it didn't uh, spark up my hand anymore so that worked that was the interim fix so thank you guys for all of your really awesome ideas I was able to heat the cabin while I was there but now I've got a proper fix for it I got a proper part although I am tempted to just kind of keep the original part in there but um, may not be as safe and it might just fail again you know what I mean but uh, yeah so I don't know why the heater uh, failed prematurely in that aspect I mean, it could be that, you know, I don't keep it running all the time. You know, these heaters are probably meant to be in houses and they're kind of like on a low temp all times uh, or, you know, in an area where there's already good climate control going on. Um, at the cabin, as you know, I mean, it can go down to minus 30 inside. It can go up to plus 30 inside. Uh, and, you know, there's condensation, humidity, like maybe a little bit of it got in a fine little crack in a ceramic part of the electrode and, you know, it froze and expanded and it cracked. Uh, I don't really know what happened there. I'm noticing a little bit of rust inside the unit as well on some of the aspects of the burner, which I'm not happy about. Um, but again, I guess this is sort of the environment that I'm exposing the heater to, and maybe that's leading to, uh, you know, some premature issues with it. Uh, I don't know what you guys think about that, but, you know, I just, a little disappointed didn't, uh, all the parts didn't last as long as they should have, but we're back up and running for now. Another thing I discovered at the cabin, I was there the last time, was at my snowmobile as I was looking at it for the season. Um, <clears throat> the cover is completely shredded. I don't know, it's a complete mess. I bought that cover, I don't know, Canadian Tire about a year and a bit ago, and it, it did, it served me well, um, but it's also ripped up. Like, I feel like I'm buying these things every two years. I'm gonna try a new one this year. I picked this one up uh, at Princess Auto. It should be good. It's um, this one right here. And it's uh, got double stitching, um, polyester, UV proof, which I think is a key. I think a lot of these things break down because of the UV exposure. Uh, and it also is waterproof as well. 
Um, <clears throat> so it says double stitch construction. So I'm praying this thing is durable, should fit my machine. My machine's not very big anyway, I don't need the XL. Um, so that's gonna go on there for this winter. I just like to keep it protected um, because it is a, it's a lovely old machine. Um, and uh, <laughs> that brings me to another topic. Um, and I was thinking this year of actually getting a new snowmobile. As you guys know, I have a 1987 Bravo. Awesome little machine. I picked it up from a guy um, that just had it in his garage. I think he had it for his kids and then just sort of didn't maintain it. And so uh, I had a little bit of issues starting it when I got it. Um, but I've been able to, you know, plunk away at it. It's taught me how to, you know, fix small engines and stuff. Um, so that's really cool. Um, and I've had a lot of fun with it. You know, it's sort of, um, it's a workhorse machine. A lot of people love these machines back in the day. They're super easy, uh, single cylinder, um, and you can still get parts for them these days. You know, I can still order parts for it uh, to fix little things here and there. You know, so it's been, it's been rocking the snow <laughs> since 1987. So, uh, and, and it's still going strong. I still use it all the time when we get to the cabin. So I think I was thinking of getting a, uh, a Yamaha transporter light, like a 2021 model or something like that, because they've been very comparable to the Bravo. So I was super excited to see them. Um, they are expensive though. And you know, like look around me, this is like November, there's my garden back there and end of November and the ground is still squishy, a little bit frozen, but you know, there's no snow. Um, so every year I get in this conversation about, you know, do I replace my old machine, uh, get something, you know, newer. Uh, something along the same lines as the Bravo and this transporter came up. I was super pumped about it. Um, but then I can never, you know, with no snow on the ground right now, uh, every year it gets worse. Um, I just can't justify spending that money right now. So that's kind of on the back burner because, you know, I don't know if that uh, the new machine is as reliable as the old Bravo. Like the Bravo, at least I generally have an idea of how to fix it and what's kind of going on with it. And clearly if it's been running <laughs> top notch since 1987, um, you know, why uh, Why get something new if uh, this is working fine? Yes, I would love to have a better machine that uh, could be going deep snow and do some other fun stuff and have reverse and, and uh, automatic start and stuff like that. But I don't know, realistically, watch. I go get something new and then it's tricky to fix and, you know, then, uh, you know, expensive parts and I don't know what I'm doing. And um, yeah, I don't know. So <laughs> I guess I'm old school in a way. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So. Uh, I think we'll just stick with the Bravo for now, and I'm going to use that new cover on it just to keep it protected as long as I can. I want to keep that thing going because uh, it's great. You know, I can just drag stuff into the cabin uh, with that little sled on it in the winter. It's perfect. Like, I don't have any issues with it. So I've put that uh, that dream of getting the Yamaha Transporter light on hold for now. And I guess I'm kind of funny that way with, with keeping old things. Um, at the house here, I have a furnace that's probably like 30 years plus old like it was here when we moved in and I maintain it like every year I have someone come out and uh, they take a look at it and let me know what they think and this year I had uh, the uh, HVAC guy out and he said you know they don't make machines like this anymore this furnace is perfect there is nothing wrong with it um, you know everything now is uh, has a lot of electrical stuff in it and so if uh, he's getting me a new furnace it would have a lot of different things yes it might be a little bit more efficient but he said when those parts go they go, you know, it's the uh, electrical components quite often that go on them. And then, uh, you know, and then, you know, they don't last as long. I think one of my neighbors had one and some had mega problems after like five years old or something like that. So I'm not in a hurry um, to, to replace my furnace here at the house either. Um, I, I have it looked at every year, make sure it's safe, make sure it's going to run, make sure there's no imminent, uh, you know, problems with it. But I'm going to keep that going forever if I can. I know it's not going to happen, but uh, they're very, very, it's a very simple machine, um, you know, easy to fix as well, as long as I can get some parts for it. So, uh, yeah, call me old school, hanging on to things that work, but uh, I just don't think they make things the way they used to. So, uh, yeah, with that, um, you know, propane heater's good to go. I'm going to get the snow machine ready to go. Um, I'm going to get all packed up and head to the cabin. So... Let me know what you guys think about uh, things that were made in the past versus things that you can buy now. What do you think about the quality? Uh, what are your favorite uh, machines of, uh, of the past that you kind of hang on to or things that you, uh, that you enjoy having around and you pray to God they last as long as they possibly can? <laughs> Leave me a note down in the comments. All right, everybody, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Have a great week. Take care.